Yeah, this is Carl from National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this uh, 2017 Rockwood Rue Model 19. Okay, we'll start on the outside here at the door side by the rear. Okay, so you can see you've got scissor type stabilizer jacks. You can crank that with a crank or with using a uh, three quarter inch uh, socket on a drill what most people do. You've got a power awning with an LED strip. This right here is the vent for your range hood. Uh, so if you're going to run the range hood fan, you want to open this up just by going like this so it flaps freely like that. Otherwise, you keep it shut. Okay. Um, the, you have outside speakers. You have a mount for a TV. you got antenna out here. And you have a uh, power. All right, this right here is the quick connect for your for a, a grill or a griddle or whatever you use on it. Um, it's just a quick connect. You put the mail end in there. Whoops, I'm sorry. Like that, and then turn the gas on that way. You can see that. I'm sorry. Turn it on that way. I'm a lousy cameraman here. Sorry. This is a a rail to hang a grill or utility table on. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, so you're getting a Husky centerline hitch. Get down here. Okay, so this is your hitch here. We'll show you how it works, of course. But uh, if you if you need to refresh your memory, just go to Husky Centerline website and follow the links to their to their hookup video, and they can show you the same thing we did. This is your cord, 30 amp, 25 feet long. This crank here, the small one, you can pull the plug out of the top of the power tongue jack if you need to. If it fails on you, you can crank it manually. The larger crank is the one for the stabilizers with the three quarter inch uh, hex on the end of it. Uh, you get a, a reducer to reduce your 30 amp down to a, 20, a 15. Just remember, you 15 amp service at home, you can't run your air conditioning without popping a circuit breaker, so keep that in mind. You can run everything else though. That's a a dump hose and a utility table you can see below all that stuff there all right okay all right so this is just a hookup if you were to purchase a solar panel uh, to charge the battery that's where you would plug it in right there you can't run the trailer with it of course you just charge the battery okay your bunks they just fold up very simply um, Basically, they're gonna, you know, this bolt here is gonna catch on that and you're just gonna close it like that. That's all there is to it, it's very simple. The uh, crossbar and the, the, the uh, rafter pole will fold right into the crease of the, of the mattress. I'll show you that when we get inside, so it's very simple. Okay, right here we have uh, your city water hookup, which is the most common way to get water to your trailer. You're just going to hook up, if you have city water, you just hook up the hose, turn the faucet on, and you're pressurized ready to go. Now, if you, if you go to a, a park that uh, doesn't have plumbing on the campsites, you can fill this fresh water tank beforehand, right? And then you can use the electric pump inside to pump your water. It works just like you have city water. This has to do with winterizing here, this inlet here. Something you'll have to research a bit to... Uh, to learn about, but it's it's the inner antifreeze is drawing in through that port. Your water heater works on gas and electric. Now keep in mind there's a switch right here. If you can see it, it's very dark, but it's a rocker switch right here in the lower left hand corner. That operates the heating element that's behind this cover right here. So it's an electric heating element. So that's where you turn it on and off. It's a, a, just for that. Now the gas switch is inside. Uh, so you just gonna flip the switch for the gas. Just always make sure there's water in the water heater. Also, I want to tell you, in case you don't know, that if you winterize this trailer, you have to bypass the water heater because you can't pump antifreeze into the into the trailer, or excuse me, into the water heater tank because it'll leave a really foul taste and a bad smell that you'll never get rid of. So keep in mind that on the back of this water heater, there are valves to bypass it. Okay, that's just a furnace. Vent. This is cable and satellite through. This is the service panel for the refrigerator. Okay. Um, outside shower. 
Okay, and this is where your power cord hooks up. I showed you the power cord, it hooks right into there. All right, so, now to dump this, you're gonna put the hose right on here. This black valve, handle valve, is the, for the black tank, which is toilet water and waste. The gray one is for uh, 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 sink and shower water. So you're gonna dump the black first, because it's the dirtiest. Then you'll dump the gray second because uh, it's cleaner than the black water. Helps clean things out. Then you can leave your black valve open. You know, this is a gate valve that pulls open. And if you choose to, which I highly recommend, you can hook your hose at the dump station right onto here, turn it on, and it'll spray out the inside of your black tank and clean off the sensors and clean out the tank even better, which is a really good thing to have. Just, but like it says on this sticker here, you always want to make sure that this black valve is open before you turn the water on, otherwise too much pressure will build up. Okay? Simple enough. Okay, so that housing up there between by the marker lights in the middle, that shows this is, this is pre-wired for a backup camera. So if you ever want to get a backup camera for it, it's pre-wired. You have to get a Furion camera. It's a Furion brand, and it fits in that housing. So we do sell them here. You can talk to our parts people if you're interested, but no matter where you get it, you gotta get the one that fits right in there, okay? Also, while we're looking up, you have to inspect your roof. You have to inspect it three times a season, so figure in the spring, in the fall, or once in the middle of summer, you go up on the roof. You can walk up there no problem or have somebody do it. Walk around, check all the seals, make sure they're good and tight, no cracking, no separation. Um, and when the day comes when you do need to touch it up, you have it done immediately or do it yourself. It's very, very important to inspect your roof. All right. So, while we're here, I'll just show you what I was talking about to, to fold this up. You're just going to pull this out of here like this. All right. Then this folds down. Let me back up so you can see. The cross number uh, folds down. Then you're just going to fold this up, right? That's all there is to it. Then you'll just fold the bunk up and you'll use those levers that uh, have the clamp on the end to hold the bunk in place. And that's all you do. You do the same thing for the front. Very simple. Uh, the monitor panel, uh, your battery is charged. Fresh water tank has got water in it, but we're still water testing it. Black tank is empty. Gray tank needs to be dumped. So uh, we're still working on that. It'll be dumped by the time you get here, of course. Um, now, I told you there's an onboard water pump. You can turn it on right there. Now, the water heater on gas is right here. Now, I showed you this switch on the outside for electric. That's a there are two switches, so I wanted to show you that one first to let you know that that has to be in the on position before you can turn it on an electric. So you would flip that one on, and, they're both, and then you can use this one right here. Okay, It's just a, a, a redundant switch. That Some trailers do not have this switch inside, so they've got the one outside. Um, so anyway, you have to use both of them. To extend your awning, you're just going to push this extend. You, you roll it all the way out till you can see the awning tube. It's eight feet. Uh, never leave it out unattended. If you're not going to be at the campsite, you roll it in because it can get damaged by the wind in just a split second. So you always want to roll it in when you're not at the campsite. All right. And then you have just lights, basically. Okay. This is an analog thermostat for your furnace. All you do is click it on, click it off. That's all there is to it. You make sure it clicks to the left to, to, to make sure it goes off. That's just a charging station for cell phones and tablets and what have you. Uh, this is the range hood I told you about. If you're going to use the vent, vent fan, then you got to open the baffle outside. you got a light here. This, you just light, turn it on and light it with a lighter. This jackknife's flat into a bed. Okay. Also, you can fold this table down. Basically, you want it down in the down position when you're traveling. You don't want it to be in the up position because it can bounce and break a window or do some damage. So what it does, it sits on these cleats right here. There's four of them. The ones in the back have Velcro. Um, so all you do is you're gonna flip this lever to the right and then fold this up. You can see there's hinges here. You just fold the legs in and lay it down in that position and use the back cushion to fill in the space. So when you're traveling, you want it down like that. Also, uh, it obviously turns into an extra bed too. So that's a good thing. Your uh, radio, 
and disc player plays CDs and DVDs. It has two zones. One is inside, two is outside. Okay. You can stream off the USB right there. You can hook up wirelessly with Bluetooth. I better make sure I know what I'm talking about before. Yes, this one has Bluetooth. So you can hook up and play your MP3s off your phone or tablet. So it does a lot uh, for considering your camping. Of course, this is your your uh, TV, of course, you recognize that. That's your antenna. It does not go up and down. It just rotates, so you can spin it to tune it in. you got a three-speed vent here, which uh, is great for drawing the heat out on those days where you don't quite need air conditioner. You have another one just like it in the bathroom. All right, your air conditioner controls are obviously right there. Your refrigerator is a gas absorption Dometic refrigerator. Okay, the controls are right here. It's very simple. There's just two buttons. Um, that's off. That's on. Okay, so you choose your mode. Um, let's see here. That's LP. That's auto. Now the reason they call it auto is because uh, it'll automatically search for electricity. If it can't find the electricity, it'll switch over to gas. Or if you're using it, you have a power failure, it'll switch over to gas automatically. Uh, so uh, that's why they call it auto, but it means electric, basically. And this here is a, you just push this to, to turn the temperature up. You're basically, you're going to have it up all the way, okay? All right. It's a gas absorption, so the only real difference is that it takes a lot longer to reach operating temperature. So you want to start at plenty of time, preferably the day before. Okay. Um... This, is, this device is a power converter. It converts 110 AC down to 12 volt DC. You see you got regular AC, 110 AC here. You got household type circuit breakers and they're labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC and you have fuses here, 12 volt fuses and they're labeled. Um, if any of these fuses were to blow, for example, they'll light up and you can see it through this tinted plastic here. Okay. Also, this is a battery tender, so it'll always, as long as you're plugged in, it'll send so much energy your battery needs, and it'll always keep it charged. All right. Last but not least, this is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It should always be green. Um, you can set the self-test here to go through one more, one for each gas. And then back to green. It should always be green. Also, if it beeps, beeps very, very slowly, it's telling you your battery is low. Okay, so if that goes off, like you just heard, you're just going to gather everybody up, get them out of the trailer, go to the front, shut off the gas, and then figure out what's going on. Okay, the, the, uh, all the lights will have a button in the middle, like that. Okay, uh, the microwave works like any other microwave. You have the fan, just like the other one. This one is actually four speed fan. Okay, and they do have vent covers over them, so you can actually open them when it's raining, which is a good thing. Sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. All the plugs are wired through a GFCI, so this one right here uh, is where you would reset it. Even the plug on the outside is wired through it, so if you're using a coffee pot and it pops, you'll reset it here. All right, the, the toilet, basically, we got a flush lever on the side. This is, okay, so um, basically you can't use a dryer and without, or without chemical, so when you get where you're going, your black tank is empty, you're gonna, you're gonna drop the chemical in the toilet, then you're going to step on the pedal and water will come wishing out and drop right into the black tank. So the thing is you want to put about a gallon or two of water in the black tank before you use it. So you just have to use common sense to say, well, you know, hold it for a little while. That's about a gallon or two, you know. There's no way to tell from the monitor panel or anything like that. So the bottom line is if you're starting off with the black tank empty, you put chemical and a gallon or two of water in it. It's very important. You can't use a dryer. It'll be a real mess cleaning it out. All right. Okay, so that's it basically. Um, when you come to pick it up, we'll show you through. Uh, we'll help you out a little bit with the bunks and all that, so you'll understand how they go up. But for all the basic function, that's about covers it. Um, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer at National RV Detroit. If you have any issues, you give us a call, and we'll see what we can do to help you out. And. Uh, don't hesitate to use online manufacturer videos to get uh, information. So thank you very much.